welcome to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, I'm so happy you're here. My name is Tina Zink and I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! and I live in Nova Scotia, Canada. And to all of my friends returning, welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing another fun fold card and the Seaside View stamp set. This is a beautiful stamp set and the Seaside View stamp set is retiring. So if it's on your wish list or after today's card, if you decide you want to get it, you will have to hurry and get it before May 3rd. I am going to also be using our watercolor pencils to color today's card. If you've not used these before, they're really easy to use. I love our watercolor pencils. And I think you're really going to enjoy the fun fold too and have a lot of fun making this yourself. So without further ado, let's start stamping. So for the card base, you want to have some cardstock that is cut to measure nine and three quarters by four and a quarter. So I have a piece of eight and a half by 11 Misty Moonlight. So I'm just going to go right along the eight and a half inch side and cut down at four and a quarter because this will give me two cards that way. So now I'm going to spin it around and on the 11 inch side, I'm going to cut down at nine and three quarters. And this little bit that you trim off, you want to save that because you're actually going to use that on this card. And now I'm going to line this up at four and a quarter and score. So there is my card fold. So when you open it, it's our standard size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. Now while I still have this paper cutter out, I want to cut a piece of my designer series paper. And isn't this absolutely beautiful? This is part of our Sand and Sea designer series paper. That's the reverse side. So, so pretty. So I want to cut um, a four by four inch square. So I'm just going to cut this right down at four. And because I'm using Misty Moonlight as my card base, I definitely want to have some of that blue on there. So I'm going to make sure that that's part of my four by four square. Now I have a piece of basic white and I'm going to cut this down at five and a quarter by four. And this is going to go on the inside of the card. And I'm going to need this piece for the focal point of the front of the card. So this little piece that I cut off from my card base measures one and a quarter and I want it to cut it down at four. So I'm just taking off a little smidgen and then I'm going to slide it over to my half inch mark and score that. So this is going to make the little flap on the front of the card. So this is the stamp set I'm using. This is one of my top 10 favorite stamp sets that's retiring. And I'm just going to stamp, have a relaxing day on the inside. And I'll use my Misty Moonlight stamp pad for that. Now, If you wanted to, you could stamp a little image down in this corner or stamp a border or something along this edge because this edge is going to show on the front of your card. So I'm going to stamp my trees. Now I'm using my stays on ink pad because I am going to show you two ways of using the watercolor pencils. One with the blender pen and one with the uh, water painter. So of course because I'm using water I do want to make sure my um, outline does not bleed. So I have my watercolor pencils. I just have them in one of our old Stampin' Up! cases. And I'm just going to pull out couple different greens and just scribble a bit of color on and grab some granny apple green because it's a nice bright green I might not even need this other one I'm just kind of randomly scribbling it on and now I'm taking my early espresso and I'm just gonna go right up that tree trunk so to color it, I'm using a blender pen. Now our blender pens have the same tips on each side. Mine are a bit stained, but they are actually clear when you go back and forth. And you can use these with your ink pads. You can use them like I'm using here. They are wonderful. And look at, it just blends those colors like butter. It's just so much fun. So I'm just working that pencil crayon into the image. And then just like if you were to use this blender pen on an ink pad, you go back and forth on your scrap paper until it comes out clear and then go into your next color. So basically, 
when you have a blender pen, you're kind of creating a marker with them, whether you're using ink pads or your um, watercolor pencils. Now what I'm gonna do is take my glue and just whoop, put it right on that inside flap, turn this over, and just line that crease up with the edge and so that it's in the middle. Just like so. And I'm going to put this on the inside of my card now. I'm going to take this designer series paper and just glue this on. I'm going to go like this. And now it's time to do my focal point. So I'm going to bring in my basic white. And I'm just going to use this chair image. I'm going to stamp that with stays on. I'm going to take my flirty flamingo, and I've decided that's going to be the color of my chair. So I am not being fussy. I'm definitely trying to stay in the lines, but could you see I'm not even coloring the whole piece? Let me zoom in for you. So I'm literally just scribbling it on. Because my blender pen or a water painter, whatever you choose to use, is going to blend all of that together. Now of course you can color it nice and soft and just keep it that way and not use any blender pen or water painter. But I'm going to. I'm going to use gray for my little side table. I'm going to make my drink kind of tropical, so it's going to be red with my little bit of um, with my little bit of lemon. Put a little yellow here to make that a lemon. I'm going to take a little bit of blue to make that glass. And now I'm taking a little bit of crushed curry, and I'm just going to work on the sand portion now. Make sure you get up in here. Okay. Now I'm taking some Cajun craze. Work that in a little bit. And don't worry about being too messy. And a little bit of early espresso. Now I want some sky on there, so I'm going to take a little bit of my Bermuda Bay and just start working it up. Now this is going to be cut with the die, I haven't decided yet which one. So I want to make sure that I'm going outside of the image enough so that my die um, cut has all the coloring in it. I'm actually going to take my Daffodil Delight and just kind of do a sun like so. Okay. I think that's good. All right, so let me show you the blending pen again. I always make sure the tip is clean before I go into it. And we'll just do the chair. And it literally pulls all that color in. I like to go in little circles as well. But there's no right or wrong. And it's just erasing all the hard lines, blending everything in really, really nice and easy. Now if you want to go in with some darker shades, a little tip is take your blender pen and just go right on to that little tip of your watercolor pencil and that will give you some uh, bolder, darker color, more intense. If you want to go into a, a darker pink, this is Melon Mambo, same thing. I'm just going to go right onto that tip and then just pull some of that color down. Let's 
see that? You have a lot of control with the blender pen and these watercolor pencils. These are wonderful for new stampers, people who have been stamping a long time. They're just they're just really great to work with and very forgiving. Okay, back and forth until it comes out clean. Now I'm going to go into my table. Go back and forth. My tropical drink. Lemon. And I'm going to do the rest now with my water painter so you can see the difference. So I have a piece of paper towel here and I have my water in my water painter. And all you do is you unscrew it and you just fill it up with water and then you screw it back on. And then you can control how much water you squeeze out, uh, which is really awesome. I love using these. So you want to make sure you've got a clean tip and that you have water coming out but not tons of water and again this is basic white cardstock this isn't our watercolor cardstock so I'm going to start with my Sun first and then I'm going to work my way up and look how that blends you guys it's like magic in here and I'm being careful not to pull in the pink from the chair and I'm also going around that sunshine because I don't want a green sun and work it down okay so now I'm gonna do the sand and all those colors are gonna blend in just like magic And I'm pulling the color up to where those shadows are underneath the chair. So you can really work the pencil crayons to get the shading how you like. And I'm not an artist, believe me, but I find that this just works really, really nicely. Now I missed a little pink here, so I'm just going to pick up some pink from my crayon. Just add a little bit right there. And there it is all colored. So now I'm going to take my stays on again and I am going to stamp my birds, stamp them onto that sun just a little bit. And just like I did with the blender pen, I'm going to use my water painter to pick up some white just from the tip and go right onto my birds. So now the coloring is done and I'm going to cut this out with the die. I've decided to use my layering square dies. So I think, yeah, that size right there is perfect. Now I'm coming in with my Misty Moonlight and I'm going to cut a larger square. I'm just going to use my Stampin' Dimensionals to put this onto that misty moonlight layer. Do you guys get the backings of these all over your house and on your pets and on your socks and everywhere? I know I do. Okay, put that on like so. And now we're gonna bring the card back in I'm just going to make sure I have a really good crease on this fold and I'm going to take three more dimensionals and I'm going to put them on the end of the flap. And just center that on like so. So this is going to open up like this and now I'm just going to take some of our um, braided trim and get a glue dot put that right there and 
I like to do that because it kind of holds the ribbon in place for me, like that extra finger. There we go. And then just tie a bow. Now the last thing I'm going to do is add my sentiment. So I'm just going to use the stays on for this. And I'm going to stamp it right, right below here, just centering it. Okay, I wiggled my stamp and you see how I got the lines there and it smudged a little bit. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to fix that. I'm going to take my black stays on. I'm going to stamp it on this scrap paper. Now you could use a punch or you could use the paper trimmer, but I'm just going to simply cut it into a banner. Sometimes I find when you make a mistake and you go to fix it, I find that the fix is even nicer than the original idea and you wouldn't have gotten creative to come up with those ideas if you hadn't had made a mistake. So I always think that's pretty cool. So I'm just flagging by going up the center and then from the edge into the center on both sides. See? That's what I'm going to do. Put it right there. It's going to pull this white in as well over there. So you see? It's going to work out just fine. Take some more dimensionals. And then there we go. Mistake covered up. And you see what I mean? How it pulls that white in? So I like that even better. And I'm going to take um, a couple little pearls. I'm going to put one on each end of the banner. And I've also decided I want to add some little birds up here. So I'm going back in with my birds. is the finished card. A really neat fun fold. Here's another one that I did and for this one I took my inks on my block and I misted them with water onto basic white cardstock and then dried my cardstock and then stamped my image in black. And then I took my seaside spray and my water painter to add that extra uh, blue. But then I'm not doing a whole lot of coloring, a little bit of white on the sail. And when you open it, this is the seaside embossing folder where I've also inked it and misted it before I ran it through. And you can see I added the sentiment over here. You can also on um, like on this one here, you can actually instead of putting a bow, you can add your sentiment over here. Add another piece of white um, or a little banner, and you can add your sentiment over here. So there's so much you can do, and I have two more to show you. This is another one I did with the other image in that stamp set. And I used my ovals and I used a different pattern of designer series paper. So there's that one. And then here you see I added a strip of designer series paper on that end as well. So you can really, really get creative. And then the last one Using the same image, but I used my circle dies. I kind of added a water scene with a little bit of our frosted white um, shimmer mist paint. And there's the inside.
So there you go. Four variations of the same fun fold using the same stamp set. This is a really, really great fold, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun making cards using it at home. If you live in Canada and don't already have a demonstrator, my links are in the description below. I'd be happy to help you. And if you live outside of Canada, you can go to stampinup.com and find a demonstrator near you. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Here's a couple more videos you may enjoy. Thanks for watching friends, I appreciate you. Happy stamping!